right, so in this video, we are taking a look at how to prepare your 3D model of your lamp head or lamp shade uh, with its mount to get ready for 3D printing on the Stratasys Uprint SE Plus. So first, we want to make sure the model is complete, that all the features are there, that the critical mounting features for that USB cable and the LED module uh, have not been substantially altered so that everything will fit. Uh, you do want to make sure you have a place for that USB cord to come out the back of your lamp somewhere near that pivot point. Uh, you want to check the measurement on your pivot point hole and make sure that it's 0.27 and you want to check the width uh, across your mount and make sure that it's 1.32. So all of those check out here. Uh, the overall size and appearance of our model looks pretty good. Uh, so once we've decided it's done, it's ready to print, we need to export an STL file. So we'll go up to the file menu and choose export CAD format and from the options on the Save As type, the drop-down menu, we'll choose STL. Now, very important, don't just blindly click Save. You do need to hit that Options button and change a few things. Inventor, for whatever reason, actually defaults to centimeters, which is not a common unit for 3D printing. Uh, so do make sure, assuming you've designed your lamp in inches, set the units for the STL export to inch and go ahead and set the resolution to high. All the other options should be okay at their defaults. So say okay. Make sure you know what directory uh, you're saving it into. Should be someplace on your personal U drive and then go ahead and say save. All right, now you might be wondering about some of these instructions. Is there some sort of guide I can read? And in fact, there is. Right on our Google Classroom under the Project References section on the Classwork page, there is a guide how to print to uh, the Stratasys Uprint SE Plus, and that's a PDF with printed instructions that go through every step that we'll be showing in this video. So do be sure to refer back to this document uh, for any points of clarification during this video. So, we'll follow the steps from this document and continue. Now that we have our STL, we'll be launching a program called Catalyst EX 4.4, that's from Stratasys. And this is the program that we bring in our STL model to. So it has a few tabs. Uh, generally speaking, we tend to work from left to right. Um, and then there's a few options over on the right-hand panel but uh, there are a few things that we check um, on the other tabs a time or two. So let's go ahead and import our STL from the file menu and it's open STL and browse to the location where you saved it. Choose your STL and say open. Now it should come in um, without any errors and as you're looking at it here in Catalyst, um, each of these squares on the general tab is one inch by one inch or one square inch. So our total build area is eight inches by eight inches. So that should give you some clue. Uh, if your model comes in tiny or your model comes in really large, you will want to check your scaling, uh, your options on the STL export. You can scale your model here. However, it's really not recommended. Um, because you want to keep the precise scale uh, at which you modeled it for fitment with the structure of your lamp. So if you feel the need to adjust the scale here, don't. Go back to Inventor and check your STL export units. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our computer is talking to the printer. Um, one of the prerequisites is making sure that the 3D printer itself is actually powered on and it does take a few minutes to boot up. So I did that before starting this video. So our printer is booted up. 
Now here we're actually already talking to our printer. We can see how much material is in it, what color it is, what support it is. Usually you're going to have to do a couple steps to get your printer added into your Catalyst program. You might see it in the drop down, but a lot of times it still won't show up. It'll show disconnected. So click this button that says Manage 3D Printers and it'll launch this little dialog. Click Add from Network and it'll show you everything that's actually online and we can say um, Add All and we can close and I'm hoping the video got those little parts of our screen here um, and we can then select it from the drop down and you should get a status of, of idle if it is or, or printing if it is and it should show how many cubic inches of material are in there and how many cubic inches of support material are in there. So working our way through the options, um, the first thing is on the general tab you have some layer resolution options. I recommend the finest at 10 thou. For the model interior, the default is sparse high density, which for a lamp design like this, I actually don't recommend. It'll increase the material utilization, it'll increase the print time. This design is mostly solid in Inventor, so I'm actually going to choose sparse low density for the model interior, um, because this is not a primarily structural component, it's primarily decorative. Um, so I don't need the strength of the high density or solid model. Sparse low density builds a couple shells and it honeycombs the interior, saving material, saving weight, and saving time. Um, if your model has very thin, wispy shapes um, that, that is not large solid areas like this one, uh, you could perhaps choose one of these other options. Feel free to uh, ask me in the lab to have a look over but for most cases, sparse load density should be fine for this part of this project. So our STL is in inches. It looks about the size we expect. We're not scaling it. I've never had a need to use anything other than Smart Fill, and that'll work great for this project. Now don't just click the Add to Pack button. There's a few more things we have to do first. Let's move our way to the Orientation tab. You can certainly try Auto Orient and see what you get and that actually looks really good for us. Um, if we didn't do that, um, sometimes auto-orient uh, is not the best way, but you can move in 90 degree or any degree increments really, but 90 works well, um, about the various axes, so that laid it down for us. Um, but when choosing your orientation, you really want to set your model so that the least amount of support structure will be used. Um, for structural components, there is a little strength consideration in which direction the layers print. Um, but nonetheless, for this part, the least amount of support structure would be used if we rolled it over the y-axis this way. So that looks pretty good. Don't worry about the position uh, of the model in the xy plane in this orientation tab. You can't control that. Uh, we'll do that on the next tab for pack. So the orientation looks great. Let's go ahead to our pack tab. We currently have nothing in the pack and notice this grid is just a little bit different. We have four squares uh, across and four squares down. So each square on the pack tab is actually two inches by two inches. Um, so we'll go ahead and add to pack our model and if I jump back to the general tab for a minute, you see the progress bar going at the bottom. And what it's doing is it's taking the solid model and converting it into the layers and the tool paths that the machine will run to print the model. So here, everything in red is actually model material. Um, and it's where it's printing those shells. And then everything in white is support material. And it does lay a bed, a foundation of support material. Uh, on the build plate first, so that's normal. Um, and then the missing areas that you see in the interior is normal. That's just a graphics um, display property. Um, it will fill the interior of your model with the honeycomb um, 
you won't have any voids as shown here. We can see the layers here, um, and sometimes that 10 thou is not a real fine resolution for gently sloping curves. So I'll try it this way and see how it comes out. Um, I may, in the long run, want to print this thing standing up for a better layer resolution, um, but for the sake of time, um, and given that it's sort of an introductory project, we'll go ahead and keep it laying down like so. So back to our pack tab, we have the overall outer shape uh, of our model. What we want to do is look at a physical build plate that's going in the machine, and they can get reused a couple times. Uh, the big important thing is that you're not reprinting in the same area that has already been printed on. Um, it's okay if the plate's been printed on, but you need to do your print in a new area. So on this particular plate on which I'll be printing, um, there were previously some other prints over in this section of the plate. So I'm keeping my model over here, and there's no need to put it out in the middle of nowhere. Um, feel free to, to come close to the edges, but just not too close. Um, also, if you have partners whose designs are ready, go ahead and get their STL, go through the same process, and add their STL to the pack so that everyone's models can print together. Uh, that's going to help everything move along a little more quickly. So do put the call out to the room. Does anyone have STLs that are ready to go before you click print on yours? Over here on the right side, we can see how much model material is being used. We're using, for this lampshade, two point, about 2.3 cubic inches of model and just under 0.6 cubic inches of support, and our print time is about 3 hours and 18 minutes. Um, in terms of model and support usage, this is reasonable here. What we have to remember is that both of these materials have a price of up to about five dollars per cubic inch. So for this project, um, this one taking a total of about three cubic inches of material, this would be about a fifteen dollar print. If you went to a high density fill or a solid fill, the model would be quite a bit more expensive. Or if you had a larger design, um, it would be quite a bit more expensive. So it is important to make sure that your model is correct or as correct as it can be before you go to print it. Um, similarly, you want to make sure that the printer has enough material to, uh, to construct your pack. Uh, if you've added multiple partners' uh, models into the pack and the size has grown and, and exceeds the amount of material available, you'll have to remove one model from the pack and perhaps print it on a different printer. So. We are ready to go. Uh, this is the only model I'm doing for today. And we will go ahead and click Print. And you'll see that it's sending the part to the printer. And the status now has changed to Pending Start. The only thing left is to walk over to the printer, um, verify that the build plate is loaded, uh, verify that our model is in the correct position on the build plate, and press the start button uh, if our model is the first one, uh, the top one in the queue. Um, and then you'll check on it a while later, and uh, if all is going well, in a few hours you'll have your 3D printed lamp shade. So um, that is the series of steps. Again, do refer back to the PDF document uh, located on Google Classroom. It includes other details like where to turn on the printer um, and other details such as how to load the build plates. Um, so that document is definitely a supplement to this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.